Hi, I'm Mike Danko, and I had some questions kind of uh, asked me lately about um, some of the things I did to make a piece of software that I wrote uh, run a little bit faster. Uh, the piece of software is an image board. It's very simple. It's not any sort of rocket science. Uh, what it, that means for people who don't know what that is, it's, uh, it's a place where you can go and put pictures and talk about pictures and post more pictures and do so anonymously. And there's, it's a it's an old sort of thing. It's not nothing new. I just wanted there's some problems that I saw uh, in the implementations that are out there, so I just kind of scratched an itch and made one on the fly. So um, the first thing that I'm going to cover in a series of screencasts here is how I made that sufficiently fast. And in this edition, we're going to cover uh, sort of the first thing that you hit before you hit. The application, which is called Varnish. Varnish is a uh, it's a cache. It's a web accelerator. It's going to um, when your web browser makes a request to the application, it's going to hit Varnish first, and then hit uh, the image board software. And the reason for that is is that Varnish will keep in memory things that it should to sort of make life better for everyone. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but I'll I'll, I'll show here in a minute and it'll make a lot more sense. Now on the Varnish website you won't actually find anything that tells you what Varnish is uh, or, or really how much it, it, it can do and what it does. So to that you might want to resort to the Wikipedia and it's got some good sort of basic level information uh, about Varnish. The important part here that you'll find in the article is that it stores data in memory and um, lets the operating system kind of do its job as far as putting that stuff on disk. And it's, it's heavily threaded, meaning that every time a different browser comes and makes a connection to Varnish, it starts another, uh, another process to, to handle that. And I don't need to get into forking versus threading in this argument here, but it, it's very efficient in what it does. So, and what it does is what I'm gonna show you here in a minute. I have here the index page for um, one of the, the, the topics of the board here. So we're going to pull the RSS feed. And if you're not familiar with RSS, I'm not going to explain it to you, but this is what the feed looks like. And the feed doesn't change all that often for, for posts here. Uh, someone makes a new post, you can wait a couple of minutes uh, before checking it again. Uh, it's not very conversational. It's like a, a post to be something that starts a conversation. So the collection of these conversations doesn't change a whole lot. And to reflect that, I said in my application, if somebody's asking me for these, this Atom format, which is the RSS feed here, the feed, um, they're different, but for the sake of conversation again. Um, if someone asks for this, uh, put a little timer on it that says any that a cache on the other side of, of the application should keep it around for 60 seconds. Then it won't change for 60 seconds. And that's that's still pretty pretty good, I guess. I mean, I, I could go five minutes, I could go 30 seconds, whatever. 60 seconds is fine. So instead of your application getting the request, Varnish is going to just say, hey, I've got a copy of that. I'll give it to you for, for that 60 second period. So let's take a look and start Varnish. So a couple of quick things here is uh, we're going to run in the foreground with the default configuration. Uh, this is a minor change. I changed the port that it uh, listens on here. Uh, I said to give it 50 megs of memory, straight out of memory uh, on my computer give it an admin interface and told it to listen on port 7000. There we go. And we'll bring up some, some stats for Varnish because nothing's touching it yet. We're about to see how great it does its job here in a moment. First, we're gonna go ahead and run Apache Benchmark, which is gonna go out there and grab the page a bunch of times on the application without Varnish. Okay, it took about 141 milliseconds on average to, to grab that out of the 20 times that I asked it to. And it can only do about seven requests a second. Well, no website's gonna 
stand up to seven requests a second. You can see that we didn't hit varnish at all. And I'll run it one more time. So that every request actually hit the application server. And every time it did this, it had to go ahead and run all these queries and see 29 milliseconds of queries here. Uh, I'm running in SQLite, so it's not a real database. It is a, never mind. I've probably offended somebody with that. But um, it's not uh, optimized for, for the sort of web application that we're doing right now. And it took 124 milliseconds to put it all together and then uh, give it to the customer, so to speak. So let's try it with Varnish instead. We'll go back to Varnish stat. And so we do the side by side here. We'll do the same 20, but on the Varnish port. It was a lot quicker. See that we hit Varnish 95% um, of the time. The other 5% of the time, it went through to the application. So we've got a Varnish is doing all the work and our application is not. We went down to seven milliseconds per request and we do 133 requests per second as opposed to the four requests per second, five requests per second. That's a big change, especially for something that really doesn't uh, need to be accessed all the time. Let's take a look at the app server when we do it with Varnish here. It never got hit because it's still in Varnish's cache. Let's go ahead and increase this number here. See what happens. Well, we went to 4,000 requests a second because, once again, Varnish is handling that for us. Anyway, that's how that works. Um, if you have any more questions about sort of cachings and caching and proxies, uh, Hit me up, let me know, and I'll talk about that.